Alrighty, welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Mayfield. And in this video, we're going to be working on that Wednesday, halfway through the week warm up. And it says this it says, put the following real numbers in descending order. Again, if you need to write that down for yourself, remember that descending order means we're going from the largest or the greatest to the least. Again, we're going down that staircase. And so again, the values that you have are 3.4 times 10 to the negative three. And so you want to put first, have those decimal uh, points, make sure those are all in a, a vertical line, all in the same column, because that's what we're trying to do with those grids there. And so you want to make sure they can say, okay, I had 3.4 times 10 to the negative, thir uh, negative three. Well, how do I change that error? Well, I can bust out that Desmos calculator, type it in for ourselves. So we have 3.4, and I do times 10. And you want to make sure that you can say, all right, how do I get that exponent up there? So I hit that A to the B button there. And that raises, and you can kind of see how the cursor comes up. And again, it's waiting for you to put in uh, the exponent. And so we say, all right, negative three. And so now we can just go ahead and place those values, again, one digit per box. So I'm going to have that 0 0.0034. Again, the reason why we're doing this is you're just trying to get those decimal place values all lined up so they are easier to compare. All right, so for that second value, we have that 0 0.34. That's already in decimal form. And so we can very easily switch that over uh, to those columns. Moving to the next one, how do I get that 60%? Well, every time you have per cent, that means per 100. And so again, if we need to make a new line, I wanna say, all right, 60, and then whatever that value is, so it's 60%, so it's 60 divided by 100. So let's make sure you type it in carefully, 60, and then divided by 100. So that's gonna be that 0.8. Six. Again, you can have those zeros after uh, the place. I know you, you don't see the zero there, but you can have it uh, filled in as placeholders. And so we um, move on to the next one. I have that square root of 0 0.25. Again, these are all those rational numbers. And so we're just trying to find, you know, what are their decimal forms? So we have a square root and then that has a 0 0.25. Well, what does that equal? That's about 0. Five itself and so you can put that in its column as well and lastly we have that one-third again if you want to make a uh, fraction first you can use that A or B button to type that in so I have one and I use the arrow keys over three and I have that 0 0.333 repeating and again I can kind of fill that out like so so I have those uh, grid all filled in and again, we want to make sure that we can compare the columns one at a time. So we're looking for the one that is the largest. And so again, we're kind of covering up. And so let me see if I can do this like so. I can make this nice and big for ourselves. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have and see, all right, well, these are all tied and so I need to shift one over at a time. All right, so now that I look at this, I see, okay, which one is the largest? I'm looking at six, five, three, and three, and zero. So which one is the largest? Well, very obviously that uh, 0.6 is the largest, which is that 60%. So that's gonna be the one that we place first in order. So again, that's in order in original form. And again, we're going greatest to least. And so now, again, you can kind of put one line through it to show that you used it. That way you don't forget. But you want to make sure that you can uh, still see it after the fact. All right, so now uh, what do we have next? Well, we're going to have the same idea, cover it up. Again, the, those are tied on the far left. And so we go to the next one. Which value is the largest? We see that that 0.5 is the largest, which in original form is that square root of 0.25. So that we're going to say that's going to be our next one. Again, make one line through it at a time. 
same idea. Again, as you uh, get more and more practice with it, it becomes a very simple. And so now again, we have that 0.3. If you notice, we have the same value and since it is tied, we have to go one more decimal column to the right. And we say, okay, which one is larger? Well, that uh, 34 is larger than the 33. And so we're gonna put that in as our next value and cross it out as you use it. And we said that that 0.33 is the next in line. Cross it out. And lastly, and leastly, we have that 0.34 times 10 to the negative three power as the smallest value. Again, you wanna make sure that you're putting those in order and in original form. So now, we have, uh, for the second one, it says give the two square roots for 324. Well, again, you can kind of check what's gonna be one of those square roots. So we take square root 324, and we say, okay, it's gonna be 18. So right away, I can say 18. But it says two square roots, and so, we're always remembered it's going to be the positive root and the negative root. And so we can say, uh, again, you can have the plus sign and minus sign. You could also write on the side, if you'd like another way of writing it, you have, you know, plus 18 or positive 18. You have a comma and you could say negative 18. You could also say, you know, positive 18 or negative 18, as long as you are including those values. And again, I can prove it like this. I'm saying, all right, in parentheses, I can say 18, and then I can say squared. Well, that equals 324. But also, I have negative 18, in parentheses, squared, is the same value and since these two lines are equal we know that those are both of the roots of 324.